surprise story I'm and surprise hello welcome to the kit bash 3d festival how you doing i don't know what just happened which part you transformed into a, a different person it scared me am i am i back you're back you're I back to normal I, I sometimes don't know no you're back oh well then then we're doing great what's up guys how's it going i'm max this is banks and uh we're back with another kit bash 3d festival Kit Bash 3D Festival. This is week two. We had on our show last week, we had E-Man and Emmanuel Chu uh, and George Hull and um, Bobby Chu and Peter Hunt. Yeah. And now we've got a pretty awesome show for y'all tonight. Um, in case you are just tuning in with us and this is your first time at the Kit Bash 3D Festival, what this is is a digital art festival. And now we are in conjunction with Twitch and the Bob Ross Marathon. Uh, the Bob Ross Marathon runs all day long till 8 p.m. And then from 8 to 10 p.m. there's a break, which we will ferry you from one Bob Ross fix to the next. And we're gonna do that by showing you how digital art is done today. Uh, and we're bringing in some of the best artists from film and games to show you what it's like to actually work on these things and, and how you can work on games and films as an artist, what their workflow is, what their process, but also their mentality and their story. One of the things we really wanted to do with this show was show how art is made for movies and games. We feel like there are so many of, of our good friends who aren't in this business feel like, you know, it's, it's either the, the actor or the director and some other people are involved and the movie gets made. Um, but we wanted to, just like Bob Ross did, show people that, that you too can, can be doing this kind of art. Uh, we wanted to show you how it's done and, and we're so fortunate to have a large group of our friends um, come on and do that. Yeah. Uh, I want to say what's up to everyone in the audience. We got a lot of people from the Kipash 3D community here. What's up, guys? I see uh, Forrest Lamb in the house, Drokey, uh, just a ton of amazing E-Man shoes in the house. E-Man. Um, guys, tell us, uh, tell us, what are you drinking right now? That's, uh, uh, what are you drinking? And we'll have to what, guess what's what, in these. What are you, oh, well. All right, then I'm going to. Oh. And guess what's in these? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, we uh, we should get uh, we should get some some cups here, some mugs that have something to do with the show. We should. Just a thought. Just Instead a of this Dixie cup mug, it's a it's a beautiful Dixie cup mug though. Yeah, um, I'm told it's a fashion statement. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I, I think it's in. It's fresh. <laughs> um, well, tonight we have a massive massive surprise um, for y'all. Well, a massive guest, um, James Pay Pack. Pack, 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 James, pack, excuse me, excuse me, <laughs> um, who will be joining us on the show. We are incredibly excited to have him here, um, and he will be here in just a few moments. Um, he's, he's in the green room right now, um, but he'll be out uh, on the show floor with us in just okay. a second. And you know his work from games like The Last of Us, Uncharted, Titanfall, Call of Duty, League of Legends, the list just goes on and on and on. Yeah, basically, if you've been playing video games recently, you've been enjoying James's art. Yeah, and uh, before we get into that, though, we want to talk a little bit about some of the stuff going on with Kitbash. Um, if you guys don't know about Kitbash 3D, we create digital assets uh, to help you build your world. And our mission is to enable and inspire artists, which is why we've teamed up with Twitch for this Bob Ross Festival. Um, and part of that is we do a contest every quarter uh, where we create a sample kit. Uh, it's a free download, and then you guys can take a shot at playing with some of the pieces and try to come up with the coolest world you can think of. Um, what was our last contest, Max? It's uh, a great question, Max. Uh, last we did uh, the Warzone contest, and Warzone was incredible. So the way this works is on our website at kitbash3d.com, you can download a free sample kit there where you get a number of pieces like you're seeing here in the back of this image um, that you can then pull into your own 3D scene and make some art like this. And once you do, you can post that online. And then many of the artists um, that are in our community uh, will vote to uh, elect the top 10 places for the Kit Bash 3D competition. Yeah, and the top 10 each get a free kit, and the winner gets 10 free kits. Uh, that's $2,000 worth of kits. It's insane. So that is now running live for Utopia. So this, the last Warzone contest had, um, I think, artists from 75 different countries. Um, downloaded the sample kit and then posted something with it. Yeah, we got 600 entries. It was mind-blowing the amount of work that they created. And uh, and we just launched Utopia. So there's a free Utopia sample kit you can grab on kitbash3d.com and uh, take a stab at creating whatever utopian world you can think of. Yeah, that's the, the cover art of Utopia there by Leon Tucker. Um, Utopia is this awesome kit made by, or in, inspired by Zaha Hadid. 
um, and some really cool futuristic architecture. So jump into that if you like, if you are a 3D artist. Um, and tonight we are going to show a couple different parts of the phase, a couple different phases of how digital art gets made and how concept art gets made. Um, what we saw last week on the show was Emmanuel Shu from Blade Runner uh, made an image uh, that he he got all he got about halfway through. He spent most of his time on the blockout phase. And what's the blockout phase, man? So he was working in 3D, taking the different pieces and moving them around, trying to create his composition, really creating the the actual world in three dimensional space, putting all the structures that he wanted, but just roughing in the lighting and really just trying to understand what is the image that he's trying to make. And when we ended with him, he had a pretty good setup in 3D. He had just rendered out his 2D images and brought them into Photoshop to start painting on top of, to add all the, the colors, the light, the atmosphere, and everything that really would bring that image to life. And so Eman this week um, finished that image and he posted it to his Instagram. Um, and then he also sent us a really cool time-lapse recording of him doing the actual painting of that. Um, so I think it is very fitting that we, uh, we show that time-lapse right now. Yeah, let's roll it. Welcome back, everybody, and look who we have in the house with us. This is James. How's it going? What's up, James? How are you? I'm good. doing good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, everyone out in the chat, please say what's up to James Pack, and we are we are so pumped up to uh, to have you here joining us tonight. Awesome. Thanks for having me. Um, so, James, uh, you have you've done a number of video games. You've worked on on all sorts of different projects. Can you tell us just a little bit about? Um, what, it, uh, what it means to you to be a concept artist in the video game world? To be a concept artist, um, put it pretty plain and simple, is to problem solve visually. You know, you're going to come across, uh, whether you're working in video games or film, 
you're going to come across a, a, a whole slate of issues from what does this character look like? What kind of pants are they wearing? What does a gun look like? Uh, what's the opening scene look like? You know, and, and a lot of the time there is not a, uh, a visual to that yet. There's an understanding of what is written on a script, but there's not an understanding of the visual, and that's what we create. Mm. Awesome. Uh, I'm curious how you found out about concept art in the first place. Um, well, when I went to art school, I went to art school here um, pretty close in Pasadena. Um, it's called Art Center College Design. And I studied illustration sort of by default. Okay, um, I like to draw people, I like to draw cars, I like to draw when I was a kid, but a friend of mine who was going to Art Center was in illustration and I saw his sketchbook and I said, wow, that's really cool, what are you studying? He's like, illustration. So I was like, okay, I guess that's what I'm gonna do. You know, <laughs> So it was kind of by default, but once I was in art school studying illustration with more students just like me, somebody came in with this book in the cafeteria and it changed about eight people's lives, literally, in that moment. And that book was called The Art of Star Wars. Mm -hmm. Okay, We saw people like Doug Chang, Ryan Church. There's a whole bunch of super professional artists that worked on that movie. And we were like, wait, you can make... Wait, this is something that actually exists? No way, dude. Like, what is this book? This is like, this is like fairy tale stuff, you know? And that was the first exposure to concept art. Man, you know, that, that exact moment is what we've seen here a couple times on this show last week where people have, have been watching this and they, they come in and they say, you know, I'm here for Bob Ross, you know, and we're like, well, take a look at how digital art can be made. Mm -hmm. And so many people in the chat have said, and actually a couple people wrote us this week and said, you know what, I, I watched the show last week, I had no idea concept art for movies and games was even a thing, and I think this is what I want to do with my life. Nice. Um, yeah, you know, I mean, how how inspiring I think, and it's it's that moment that you're talking about. Yeah, and it was literally at that moment as well where I knew where all of my efforts wanted to go for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. I've never had that kind of moment ever, you know, mm -hmm. like let alone what I'm going to eat for lunch, you know. <laughs> but it was pretty crazy because when I was studying illustration, it was like, oh, are you going to work in you know the magazine world? Are you going to do uh, gallery art? Are you going to I don't know sell painting somewhere? And there was so much confusion. You know, mm. but once I saw a drawing of a robot and it's like, wow, somebody can work on Star Wars and make a living doing it, sold. <laughs> Done. What, what age do you think you were about this time? I was about 21 or 22 years old. And what did your parents have to say about that? Okay. <laughs> that's, a, that's a little bit of a different story. And, it, and it's challenging because uh, with my background, my parents were very, um, hey, go to the university you know, get a degree, something with engineering, science, uh -huh. medicine, whatever it might be, right? And um, although my, my older sister was kind of like that, I wasn't, you mm -hmm. know? Um, I like to explore and I like to fail and I like to get hurt and kind of pick myself up. So once, you know, the battle to kind of get into art school was one thing, but once I was able to fixate on what I wanted to do, I changed. Okay, it wasn't that I had to change people around me, it's I changed and they saw, they're like, whoa, this is, this is James that can actually work hard. This is James that's focused. And it made them see, you know, um, and kind of believe in me when all other times I, would, I wouldn't really hit that bar. They, they really worried a lot, you know? Mm. Yeah. What, what, I'm curious, so you went through art school. Did you switch tracks or did you stick with illustration till the end? I uh, stuck with illustration till the end. It wasn't until a little bit after I graduated when the school kind of realized, hey, there's a lot of people that want to do digital art, concept art, and things like that. When I was at Art Center, you know, we would, we would be tasked to uh, do oil paintings, for example, because mm. it's illustration, mm. right? Um, and then we'd bring in a digital painting. We'd print it out. You know, we'd do it in Photoshop, we'd print it out, and we would totally get reprimanded with, like, bad grades. You're like, what are you doing, man? Like, you need to do an <laughs> oil painting. What is this piece of Epsom paper, you know? <laughs> So we kind of got the, back, the bad end of that stick, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? But the school paid attention. Now there's a whole fledged program purely dedicated to concept art and concept design. Mm -hmm. So when you got out of school, how, what did you do? I mean, you had a portfolio. Mm -hmm. Did you get a job right away? What, how did you get your first foot in the door and what, what was that project? My first foot in the door was working at an ad agency. Okay, and you know, for a lot of people graduating from art school, getting their first job, you know, it's sort of like that idea, ideal time, 
-hmm. you know, where they're like, oh, I want to work for the best studio, I want to work on the best projects, but, you know, for some other people, it's reality. It's like, you got to pay the bills, you got to pay back your student loans, things of that nature. So I had to take the lowest hanging fruit or the first opportunity that I could grab onto, which actually worked out, you know, way better than I could have imagined. I was working at an ad agency as an illustrator. Okay, <laughs> go figure, right? <laughs> but I learned a software called Photoshop inside and out, which enabled me to have like a tool belt, you know, of, of things that I could rely on, you know? You gotta know your tools in order to create something, just like a carpenter's gotta know their tools. So it was, that was my first opportunity to kind of be in the creative art world. And then from there, I worked on my own to develop a design portfolio that later helped me segue into video game. Gotcha. Yeah. And what was the first game that you worked on? I first game that I worked on was called Jason and the Argonauts. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's a... Uh, it was it was a learning exercise. <laughs> it was a life <laughs> exercise. Um, I got to learn a lot about how video games were made, you know, because for a lot of people, I think it's just a big mystery, mm -hmm. you know? It's like, yeah, there's a bunch of smart people in a room and they make this game, you know? Um, but that was the first game I worked on. And then from there, I eventually started working with a larger company called NCSoft where they did uh, City of Heroes, they did Lineage, they did another game called Tabula Rasa, um, Auto Assault, they're, they're kind of a more bigger international company, so that's, that's kind of the second job. Amazing. Yeah. Um, super cool of Droki and Forrest Lamb for tossing into the chat. Uh, links to James's art station as well as his Instagram. While we are uh, jamming away here, um, before we, we dive into some live painting, be sure to click on those links um, and take a look at some of the art that, uh, that James has created. Also, we have a lot of questions for James because we've been itching to chat with him, but uh, if you guys have questions, throw them out in the chat and we're going to, uh, we promise we'll get to them. Speaking of our station, there's James's our station right there. Um, yeah, but keep keep them coming in the uh, in the chats. And uh, Josh Rochelle loves those crossfades. Right out, Josh. What up, man? <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Um, so uh, please continue, Maximin. Oh well. Uh, so you got your job at NC Soft. Mm -hmm. uh, were you happy there? Did oh, you? I oh my god, I loved it. The only bad thing about the job was uh, LA traffic. That's that's the only thing I could say. Mm -hmm. You know, I live in Pasadena. The job was in Santa Monica but it was the best nurturing environment that I've ever been in, even to this day, I think, because the team was awesome and the art director genuinely cared about the artists. Mm. That, was, that was something that, that you know, was amazing to experience. Yeah. Can, can we talk a little bit about, you know, I think when looking at, at such an amazing body of work that you have, can we talk a little bit about some of the, the hard things, some of the mistakes early on? I think it's such a, a romantic idea that, mm -hmm. that growth is painful, but what is, that actually, what is that actually like in the early stages of a career? Well, there's a couple of things, and I think there's really two aspects to kind of look at. One is to, is to build up your skills. Now, that's, that's painstaking. You know, it's everyday practice, 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 and challenging yourself to learn new things. And you have to anticipate failure. That's, that's I think that's something that a lot of people struggle with today. And, you know, I, I struggle with that all the time, which is no one likes to fail, but it's about discovery, you know, learning about you and learning about a technique. The second thing is understanding how to problem solve. And we kind of talked about that in the way beginning, which is problem solving for somebody that doesn't exactly know what they want, mm. you know? Mm. And that's a skill that you develop. You, you understand how to a ask the right questions. What kind of mood are you looking for? How, how do you want it to feel, you know? And then you start molding this, this sculpture of, of their vision, you know? And then you bring in those techniques to kind of finish it off, you know? So I think those, those two sides of it is what was the big learning aspect. That was the challenge, actually. Mm. Is, is learning the language and how to interpret, mm -hmm. you know, and find what it is about the, the director or the client yes. and find what it is they, that they want visually, even if they don't know it. Right. And, and that is why we have a job. That is why concept art as an industry exists, because if everybody could draw, you know, that'd be great. Mm -hmm. But there's somebody that's writing the story. There's someone that's thinking of the concept. But how do we translate those words into what you see on the screen? and it takes millions of dollars to do that, we help bring that vision to reality so people are like, yes, yes, that's what I want. Yeah. Mm. yeah. 
in, in working for in a, a video game context, what, what would a brief look like? You know, what's what's the what is that language or what is the the piece of material that they give you mm -hmm. that kicks you off? There's a couple of things. Um, one is going to be the very high vision aspect of it. Okay, we're creating an alien world where a crashed ship is gonna is gonna you know there's well, there's gonna be a crashed ship and you're gonna explore that planet. Okay, that's a very big broad scope. Okay, that's where a lot of exploration happens. You can do a lot of cool drawings, designs, and you know, probably watch a lot of cool movies mm -hmm, to get inspired. Mm -hmm. But then there's a second aspect of a video game, which is gameplay. I mean, that's why we really love games in itself, is because it's exciting to play. And being a gamer myself, you start to understand, well, if I was in this space, what would I want to do? Mm -hmm. How would I want to mm -hmm. engage with this environment? Or what, where would I hide the enemy? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Those are the kind of things where you kind of bring those two worlds together. Together, it's, it's visual and mechanical almost combined. And it, essentially, that's what concept design is. It's conceptual and it's designing. It's art and design happening together, you know, which is why it's so fun to do. And that's why it's so important for the world to have that type of skill set. Mm. I love that. A question for the chat out there. Um, what are some of your favorite movies and games? What of those um, have inspired you? Um, and could you see yourself in a concept art kind of role? Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm curious, you've done so many projects, and was there a moment where you felt like, I've made it, I know, like, I've, I've been working really hard to master my tools, and I've finally gotten to a place where I feel confident that my career as an artist is going to be successful? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I would say yes and no, okay. Um, and, and this kind of stems back to going to art school and having those core friends that are your friends and sort of your worst critics, right? Mm -hmm. Because um, the cool thing is, is that the same group of guys that I went to school with, we all went into the industry, we all started working together, and everyone is actually doing very well, okay? Um, but the thing is, is that it becomes a new challenge. You know, you, you start to practice and, and you get a good understanding of your skills and you, and you feel good. You're like, yeah, I, I kind of rocked out this painting. It's really awesome. And then you see what your friend did and you're like, damn. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh -huh. You're like, oh, I thought I could go out for dinner, but no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sit at this computer some more and, and kind of sharpen my skills because you get inspired by everything, mm -hmm. you know? And sometimes you get inspired by, by your best friends, yeah. you know? And, and that's what keeps, keeps us driving to get better and better and better. Yeah, that healthy competition, yeah. you know, I think is, is a really great thing. You know, it can get carried away, but if you, if you have a good buddy that, that you can, can work with and grow with and get feedback from and give feedback to and, and, and can be inspired by the things they're doing, yes. I mean, so it makes it more fun. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, it does. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, so you're at NC Soft. Well, I'm going to cut ahead a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. So you worked on a ton of stuff after NC Soft until you got to the point where you decided to launch your own design studio. Correct. Uh, what made you want to do that? Okay. So the thing that one of the low points in the, my career was when, you know, in 2008, 2007, there was a, a pretty bad crisis of the economy mm -hmm. in, the, in the United States, and a lot of people lost their jobs. You know, and I was one of them, um, and I was put in a position where I could say to myself, okay, want to go into another studio? That's definitely an option. Or do you want to try to do something on your own? See how that goes, you know? And I think that always tickled my brain, you mm -hmm. know? I always wanted to try that, but I was always scared to do it. Like, who would let go of this, like, you know, security kind of do that? And when I was put in that position, I was like, all right, let's, let's try it, let's do it. So I gave myself a window of six months for six months, I would work my butt off, do as much work as I could to get exposure, put my name out there, and let's see how it goes, you know? And it's been sort of that ever since. In, in those six months, was that personal work? Was that motivated on your own? Or was that, let me pick up freelance jobs or a bit of both? It was personal work. The thing that I realized, and I had to talk with a lot of people, and I was talking about my nurturing art director before. Uh -huh. He was a great help in sort of giving me advice. Um, but it was creating my own work because no one's gonna hire you if they don't know who you are. Mm -hmm. You know, no one's gonna hire you and say, "Let me look up a name I don't know," mm -hmm. <laughs> right on the internet. Yeah. And you know, um, so it was creating a body of work to put out there. Yeah, 
We got a question in the chat. How long after you started working in concept art did you start the design studio? Um, so I started working in 2000. OK, so the timeline is advertising started in 2005. I stopped in 2006, OK? And then in 2007, for that full year of 2007, that's when I worked at um, a couple of video game companies, OK? At that point in 2008, that's when I started my own company. Wow, so that's pretty fast after yeah. you started in the industry. Yeah. And, wow. and a lot of people don't know this, but you, I had to fake the funk <laughs> as much as possible because people don't know, like, you know, they're like you come into a meeting and you have, you, you know, have this body of work that, you know, ideally would impress them. So they say, yeah, you know, are you, uh, do you know this type of gaming engine? Are you familiar with this 3D? And you're like, yes, I do. <laughs> Even <those>. though <laughs> you're like, okay, I got to learn that when I go home, you know, type of thing. So, um, a lot of it was was trying to gain in the the relationships, yeah. you know, of meeting these directors, meeting these producers, art directors, and whatnot to try to do that. And that was Scribblepad. Yes. Right. Yes. So Scribblepad is James's studio mm -hmm. that um, you guys have done all kinds of projects over the last decade or so. Yeah. Um, and when thinking about when building out that team, um, what were some of the things that you you knew that you had, and what were the things that you who were, who were the key people for you to find along the way? Okay, so my main body of work and for Scribblepad initially was environment design. It was world creation. And slowly as world creation started to go into, into keyframing, which is showing what the character in the world and the storytelling is all doing together, um, it slowly went into, well, what does that vehicle look like that they're in? Mm -hmm. What does the character look like that's shooting that weapon or mm -hmm. flying through the sky? So it helped me understand also about character design and all these other aspects that were related to environments, you know? So slowly it was able to be like, okay, you know, we need someone that does hard surface weapon design. Mm -hmm. Oh, let, let me find somebody that can do that, you know? Yeah. Let me work with them, try to build this cohesive body of work so that we could now showcase those to different studios. And for the audience, if, if y'all uh, are not familiar, concept art is kind of broken down into several different segments. There's, as, as James has, has showed us in some of the other videos, there are world builders, um, there are, uh, you know, who are environment guys, and then there are props guys who are building weapons and vehicles. And Correct. Like and character yeah. designers as mm -hmm. well. And mm -hmm. sometimes it's just style frames of just like the overall with everyone in there. Yeah. Um, what do you like to do the most now? I am really into, uh, I guess, what's called keyframe illustration. Um, that is taking all of the combined elements and putting them all together and, and creating that visual so you can actually show that painting to a director and they're like, yes, <laughs> this, is, this is exactly what I'm going to shoot. You know, this is yeah. exactly what the game is going to look like because um, it's bringing all the elements together. Yeah, what's really cool too about concept art um, and looking at some of these images is is concept art is iterated over and over and over again, and then what is finally landed on, um, as James is saying, is that is what will end up on screen. And so that everyone else, after that process, after that image is set, will then go and build exactly that to make it work. Correct. Yeah. Um, and you're seeing some of that on screen. You've seen some uh, some stuff from Deadpool and, and from Transformers that uh, that James and his studio created. And like I know those moments in those films. It's mm -hmm. it's so cool to see. A painting that that got directly translated into the film. I think that was part of the excitement looking back at the Star Wars book because you saw the movie. The book came out after, and you're like, "Oh my God, that was the design uh -huh. that I saw when uh -huh. I went whoa!" You know, <laughs> when I saw that ship fly by, and I think that inspirational moment was really what what hit the heart. You mm -hmm. know, and and I think subconsciously, as you're developing your skills in your career. That's that's the moment that you're striving to hit, you know, mm. for yourself. Mm. Yeah. So do you have all the book, all the art books that, like the Art of Uncharted and Art of Titanfall and all oh, these things? That oh yeah, <laughs> dude, my Amazon book account is, it's ridiculous, dude. It's like I spend a lot of money on books because it's a never-ending source of inspiration. And as we all know, if you have that inspiration, you know, you're gonna go for it, mm -hmm. you know. And and that's what I constantly need around me is is that is that you know, uplifting inspiration, yeah. Amazing. I, I want to ask you about your habits. Okay. Uh, you know, what are, what are some of your, your best habits as a, as a professional concept artist, and what are, what are some of the worst ones that you're, you're trying to work through? Whoa, that's an interesting question. I don't think I've ever been asked that. Um, I think 
in some ways it's a double-edged sword because some of my good habits are what creates my bad habits. Mm. Um, I get really, 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 I go, I go full force, you know. Um, I kind of go from zero to 100 miles an hour really, really quick. And so, and I'm also a very, I also have like a very addictive personality. Mm. You know, I get into something and it just takes over my life, mm -hmm. you know. So when I saw, again, when I saw the book, I'm like, yes. When, mm -hmm. I, when I wanted to become a better drawer, you know, or better draftsman, I just drew every single waking moment that I had, you know. And, that's, and at times, it, it, there's a sacrifice, you know. Um, you know, you're working so hard to develop your skills because you're so passionate about it, but at the same time, it's like, your buddy calls you up and says, hey, man, it's Saturday night, let's go out. And you're like, no, man, I got to do my art. <laughs> They're like, what? Like, what are you doing? Uh -huh. But, you know, I think everything has a time and place, right? Um, so that's, that's some of the good and bad things. Um, right now, the things that I'm trying to work on is creating better balance mm -hmm. you know when i was young and you know you could you could sleep two hours a night just be on red bull and caffeine all the time it's not the best thing for your health right but it's i guess kind of what you do when you're younger uh, but now at, at a bit older age i want to find that life balance i want to create better experiences with family i want to you know travel i want to see other things to also gain that that retrospect and sort of more inspiration you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah do you have a morning routine I, my morning routine is I need to be active. That's one thing I realized about myself is I need my blood pumping. I need, I need exercise, mm -hmm. you know? Um, again, concept art, you're sitting a lot. You're in front of the computer a lot. So it's not the most, you know, encouraging environment to, to stay healthy, but so you make the time, you know? And I think in the morning, that's something that I always try to do, uh, whether it's just five minutes. And that's the thing, like, that's the thing that I learned about drawing is that, you know, when you get really hyped up about something, you're like, oh, dude, I'm going to draw for like 18 hours. <laughs> and then the next day it's like 15. It just goes <laughs> until it goes away. I try to actually start small, which is like, hey, just do five. Just do five or 10 minutes. And then you end up actually liking it so much more because there's not that pressure, mm -hmm. you know, and then it, it also allows you to do it longer. Amazing. Yeah. Really quick, before we go to the next question, uh, Josh Shaw asked an awesome question to the chat, and I want to, I'm really curious. Uh, he goes, can I get a roll call? What do you guys do? Aspiring artists, professional concept artists, have you guys heard of concept art? Uh, would love to see in the chat kind of where you guys are at and what your relationship with this stuff is. Um, so we know how to tailor these questions more to you. Yeah, thank you, Josh, for that. That is that is outstanding. Mm -hmm. Please, everyone, put it in the chat um, who you are, what you're doing, um, what part of this process you're in. Um, let's get, we we would we would like Josh. We would love to get to know more about you guys. Uh, uh, well, so so we we've been lucky enough to to visit in Scribble Pad. Um, it's quite an operation you have. You have a full team going and mm -hmm. cranking out and. We, the, the moment we walked in, James was, was at the board and he was describing four or five different things and 15 people went and immediately acted on it. Do you find that, that now that you have such a full operation that it's hard to, to do some of those things, the balance kind of things that you're talking about and to get out and travel and, and have that kind of lifestyle? It is. Um, again, I think it's, it's always a challenge to kind of do that because you know, our life never gets more simplified. It always gets mm -hmm. a little bit <laughs> more chaotic. Um, but I think that's something that's always... You know, if it's on your mind, you're going to end up trying to practice it. You're going to try to at least implement it a, a little bit more than when it's not on your mind. So, um, yes, absolutely. But I, I'm very thankful to have a, a support system, a family and a wife that, you know, kind of almost forces me to do it. Mm. You know what I mean? And, and I'm thankful at the end of it because sometimes I'm just like, oh, no, no, no. The project comes first. I got to do this. I got to do that. But it's like, no, like take that time out, yeah. you know, and you can come back stronger. Mm -hmm. you know? And I think that's just with a little bit of experience. Yeah, that's amazing. Forcing, <laughs> forcing the balance in those, in those moments where you're like, hey, I got I to now take this. Yeah, time. yeah. Uh, I'm curious, since you have so much going on with Scribble Pad and you guys have your hands in so many different games, mm -hmm. um, when did you make the decision to open up your own school and start Brainstorm? Okay, yeah. so Brainstorm School is, was a sort of a side project that started off a hand a handful of years ago that was really about trying to offer just a little bit of education for the masses you know um, art schools nowadays are super super expensive and they can and they can 
really way down on mm -hmm. the finances. So we wanted to offer, uh, we saying my myself and my partner John Park, mm -hmm. uh, wanted to offer something back, you know, and that's that's where it all started. Um, throughout this whole time of doing concept art, I, I was teaching as well, and it would be maybe at Art Center or these other smaller schools, and it was only like once a week, but I really was able to connect with a lot of the students, you know. And uh, in the same way that that art director kind of connected with me to help me out. And it's always like that pay it forward kind of idea. Mm -hmm. So that's where it started. Um, Brainstorm started with one class, okay? It was an environment design class. And it had 12 students in it, okay? And that was about five years ago. Now, Brainstorm has grown tremendously to offer a full-fledged concept art education. Um, we offer about 20 to 25 different classes, ranging from environment design, characters, creatures. Uh, you can build a cool portfolio if you want to go into an art school, or you can develop a portfolio if you want to go into the working world. That's amazing. I'm going to put the link for Brainstorm so you guys can all see it in the Twitch chat. Yeah, so cool. And if you guys don't know, um, James mentioned his partner, uh, John Park. Um, both of them are absolute powerhouses in the industry. I'm also going to throw um, John's Instagram into the chat here. If you haven't uh, seen any of his work, be sure to click on that and check these yeah, guys out. Yeah, he's insane. Um, super cool. I mean, the fact that the two of you guys teamed up to, to make your own school is outstanding. Um, so if you guys are, are interested in, in diving more into a little bit of the how-to, more in depth on this, um, be sure to check out Brainstorm. And we're going to have a lot more questions for James coming up, um, but we're going to get the Cintiq out and get Ooh, him working. Let's get uh, to painting. <laughs> uh, this is super cool. Our head of 3D, Droki, who's in the chat right now, um, built a really cool 3D scene using kits from Kitbash 3D and uh, kind of laid out a base and a foundation without any lighting, without any mood or atmosphere or anything like that. Um, I guess this would be similar to maybe what an, a level artist or an environment, yeah. you know, like a level artist in a game would give you to say, hey, here's what we're thinking for the level. What is the mood here? Absolutely. Um, which I guess would be part of style frame design, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah, uh, 3D is a huge part of whether games, film, even theme park, any, any type of design. Um, and we have to use a lot of 3D assets, a lot of 3D base to then, you know, illustrate on top of and, and create more depth of the concept. Amazing. Yeah. So what we're going to do is we're going to roll a time lapse that Droki created of him putting together the scene. Uh, and when we come back, uh, James is going to open this up in Photoshop and, uh, and start painting. Here we go, Droke. <laughs>
Bang a rang. Well done, Droke. Um, and now, in, in all good tag team fashion, James, you're up. Awesome. <laughs> cool. Um, so, as, as you see here, we've got James's Cintiq here hooked up so that you guys can, uh, we can all be watching what he's doing in real time. Yeah, so um, we have this awesome shot right here. Um, this really, really ridiculously awesome uh, 3D layout of a city. And so I'm going to really treat this like it's part of the job. You know, exactly some of the steps that we go through. And what you can kind of see right here is my basic tool sets for Photoshop. And for some of you guys that don't know Photoshop that well, is imagine the most powerful software you could ever think of. Okay, and that's Photoshop. <laughs> okay. It has so many things that you can do that simplifying it down to core tools is really, really important. Because graphic designers, painters, you know, even even you know your little nephew that wants to make memes or something will use Photoshop. So um, some of the things that I have over here are my tool presets, and the tool presets are a series of brushes that I've made or that I've gotten from some friends. Um, and these are brushes that sort of mimic real tools, you know, like a pencil, a pen, a marker, or a paintbrush. And the reason why we try to mimic real tools is because it's familiar. You know, we've, mm -hmm. we've used a pencil our whole life. We know how it should feel. We know how the mark should be made. So that's something that we try to do. So right off the bat is I'll just kind of show you a couple of really quick brushes or tools, you know, you kind of have something that really quickly just mimics a pen, okay? And we can up the sizes and things like that. We have a round brush that you can almost think of as sort of like a marker. Other tool sets, something like a dry brush, chalk. So you can kind of see that these are just very, very basic tools that, you know, a lot of people can be very, very familiar with, okay? The first thing that I like to try to do when I'm working on a piece like this is to sort of understand the big picture, okay? And the big picture is going to be what is the mood? What's the atmosphere? What are we trying to show, okay? So when I look at this image, I kind of have to go through my database of things that I've seen with my own eyeballs. And I try to think about remembering a moment, you know? And that's, I think, a lot of the times what, what directors do or, or, or people that write you know, stories, they try to recollect a moment. And so I'm going to try to think about a couple of things that can really help me do that. Um, I also download and take a lot of photos. And mm -hmm. these photos are actually very, very important to a designer or a concept designer because it helps us relate back to reference, mm -hmm. you know? And reference is so important because our brain, as, as strong as it is, we can't remember everything, you know? And we have to re rely on reference, photos, materials, books, whatever it might be, uh, to kind of do that. So let's say, for example, and it's kind of funny because, you know, when I say that I kind of go full force with everything, the, the important thing that I have to remember is that when I get into doing a painting, Let's say it's for, you know, Star Wars or something. Mm -hmm. I have everything Star Wars in for all five senses. You know, I have, I have like <laughs> a Star Wars movie. I have a Star Wars book on my lap. I have Star Wars toys in, in reach. I have Star Wars music. Everything that is around me is full Star Wars. Total immersion. So, exactly. Total immersion, you know. And so that's what I like to try to do. And I, not, not everybody's like that, but I don't know. That's, that's just really me. Okay. Um, first things first is this piece is very, very complex. You can see in this, in this city layout that there's overlaps, buildings, there's, there's highways, and there's this really, really cool centralized um, building sort of as a focal point. And I want to really create that to be the main shining sort of element that's there. Okay, So let me think about it like this. I'm going to start by establishing a mood, okay? And that mood is going to be really simple. All right. So let me get my color picker over here. Do, 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 do. Where are you? No. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Okay. All right. One, 
second. While James is doing this, I'm curious what time zone or what time is it for you right now? Uh, for us, it is Almost nine o'clock at night. And uh, and I'd love to see what time it is for all of you in the chat. It's always such a crazy thing when someone's starting their day right as you're ending it. Yeah. Or if some of you guys are up at four in the morning to watch this, then right. I don't know what you're doing, but I hope we make it worth it for you. We did that last week and realized that people in almost every time zone around the world were watching. Yeah, we got Tav Dude is 11.51 p.m. We got Janizi, 5.51 p.m. in New Zealand. Chris, 2.14, 10.15. Teleporter's here in PST with us. Justin Gallimore, 11.51 p.m. Yeah, this is awesome. All over the place. Hebron's in the room with us from Indonesia. Hebron so Goosey. is Safira. Hebron Goosty in the house, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> All right, so we're, we're, we're setting mood. So you went in and you, you chose your palette and sort of matched your reference. Yes. And now you're, you're giving the, the whole piece a specific time of day. Exactly. And, and when studying a certain time of day, there's usually a tone of light and dark, and there's a certain color associated with it. So that's what I'm trying to establish right now. Mm. And so you've gone with almost uh, uh, sunset or sunrise here. Mm -hmm. Some, someone out there is experiencing this right now. Some, someone's experiencing this time zone that you're painting here. I'm going to try to find him. Arthur VP probably is at 5.50 a.m. over there. <laughs> so this, this is right outside your, your window, Arthur. Yeah, Miss you, Noah. <laughs> Same thing, 5.51. And Janizi. I guess that's what time it is. Uh, I don't know where it's 5.51. Where are you guys at? Where is it? Sunrise right now. Um, and so, James, you were, you were flipping through your passes there. Yeah. Right. Um, but what are, you, what are you using those for? I'm using that to basically get a selection um, for the skyline, mm -hmm. um, just to be able to paint what looks like atmosphere behind the, the buildings, mm -hmm. you know? And so again, Photoshop is such a powerful tool that if you know where to sort of find these elements, it really aids you instead of having to try to carefully paint around these very delicate shapes or delicate buildings, you know? It could be so time consuming just to do that. And uh, you guys would be pretty bored watching that. So <laughs> I want to take as many shortcuts of use, utilizing the strengths of the software as much as possible. Um, question for the chat. How many of y'all out there are working in Photoshop yourself? Not right at this moment, but how many of you use Photoshop? And how, for how many of you would it be helpful if we, got, if, uh, we asked James to share some of those um, little tricks and tips along the way? I don't, we don't want to make this too technical if that won't be um, helpful to uh, a large amount of y'all, but if, if you guys want uh, that kind of stuff, let us know and uh, we'll toss it up. Um, super cool. So, so these are different passes that happen in the render from when, as Droki did his block out, he set all the pieces up and then he delivers these multiple passes that James can then um, cycle back and forth and use to, to cut out the silhouettes and things. Um, so that he can only um, work on the buildings or only work on the skyline. Yeah, this is this is uh, actually a really important part of production. And what I mean by production is the actual artwork that's going to help create parts of the game or create parts of the movie. Um, because time is a very important factor with our job. Mm -hmm. um, you know, people that work in concept art on a very professional level, they they get paid pretty well for what they do. You know, and it goes against almost all preconceived notions of what uh, the starving artist is, which is, you know, a lot of our parents, let's face it, they kind of have that mentality. Um, but this is a very, very different sort of commercial world where art meets, you know, professionalism. Yeah, commerce, yeah. 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 So, um, you know, we want to be able to create quick visuals and we want to be able to do it in a very sort of compelling way, you know, really inspirational. This has been almost a, a repetitive theme on this show is the idea of speed and many people in the chat say, you know, would does speed compromise quality and aren't there jobs that just want you to, you know, only go for the quality? Um, and I think what the, the thing we keep hearing is yes and yes, like you have to make quality images fast. Mm -hmm. um, in order to compete because there just isn't infinite time and we're all living on some kind of deadlines and especially if you're working on some of the projects that uh, James or the other artists in this festival have been have been doing, you have to go, you have to be able to deliver and I think uh, some of these tricks and tips and knowing the keystrokes or the shortcuts 
um, are some of the ways that you can get there. Absolutely. The that's I think you hit it on the dot, which is, you know, you got to know you got to know your tool. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think going back to sort of my history of, of working in advertising, it was so important for me to have had that history of learning Photoshop as a tool because mm -hmm. that two years where I was working as, as an illustrator there basically paid me to learn. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And every experience, whether you think it's a positive or negative, is gonna aid you to get you to your goal. So don't, don't like for anybody, don't ever think that there's a waste of time. Mm -hmm. It's only a waste of time unless you let it. You yeah, know, you for, if, you let yourself think that. If you don't learn the lesson, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. 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 We 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 find that re, re, is a repetitive theme for us as well. Where the you know it's it's a, if you win and you don't learn much from it, but on the it's from the struggles that you come through with the keys to helping you figure out the next steps. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think everyone had those jobs where, like you were talking about, how you had to fake. A little bit of, of what you did, <laughs> and then and then spend your after hours um, doing some extra studying to catch mm -hmm. up and get in the game and work work at that speed. And then once you have so many reps in, um, then you're able to to work faster and work work on a, a normal schedule, or, or, or possibly even achieve some balance. I'm, I'm I'm sure there's somebody working with me from or that's worked with me in the past that's like. Wait, I thought you said you'd do that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, fake the funk. Yeah, well, that, that's any lesson for the day. You know, but it's it's not it's not like f do the job without knowing the skill. It's it's like it's yes, I can learn that tonight. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, and yes, as as you were saying, you know, two hours and and Red Bull as a as a someone just starting out in the game, um, you double timed it. You know, and you put in those extra hours around that to learn in real time on the job what you were doing. Mm -hmm. So one thing that I, I kind of want to key in on right now about yeah. this image is that it's it's going to start building up pretty quickly, and I have a specific moment in my mind about what I want to portray in here. And I remember traveling to Singapore one year, and I was I was jet lagged. It was nighttime. I was bored. I couldn't sleep. So I went outside and I started just to look around the city. Singapore is like this super high-tech city or, you know, state mm -hmm. or country that everything is just so awesome. And I remember watching the sun sort of come over the horizon and I'm like, oh my God, I feel like I'm in Blade Runner. I feel like I'm in this science fiction city. And I was just, my breath was taken away, you know? Yeah. And I remember trying to pull out my camera on my phone and my phone was dead. So I just sat there and I observed. You know what I mean? Mm. That's that's something that I wish people would do more of. Instead of trying to capture it on your phone all the time, sit there and actually abs absorb it all, you know? Mm, yeah. And I'm trying to recreate that moment because I remember how I felt, mm -hmm. you know? And when I want someone to look at this image, I want them to feel the exact same thing that I felt when I was sitting on that bench. Yeah. Mm, that moment of awe. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yep. That's amazing. I love how you talk about it like it's, uh, how you use the word moment. I love that. Here, I'm, I'm, I'm going to take a moment from my life or uh, the feelings associated with something and, and put it into this. Let that be your inspiration. We have a couple. Well, let's, let's, let's take a look at what you're doing here because you're Is using it, photographs in here. You're putting them together in these, like, you're mirroring them and messing with them and then screening them on top. What's, what's, what's your process right now? So what I know about... Um, Photoshop through through just experimentation and the way I like to work is that photos are really good materials to use as textures, okay? And that's what I'm trying to do right now. I created a silhouette from the city that was given to me. So this whole skyline here is a really, it's, it's just a big shape, mm. you know? And I need to start filling it in with familiar textures. Something that when, when someone looks at this photo, they're like, oh yeah, that's a city. Mm -hmm. Those are buildings. <laughs> Pretty similar to what I'm trying to paint right now, right? And so if I can associate with some textures that you already know, my job becomes that much easier because you already believe the space. You believe the texture and you're gonna believe what's in the space. Mm -hmm. you know? So a lot of times, you know, like robot designers, they'll they'll have this really cool robot shape, but they'll use familiar objects like a tank 
a, a, an engine bay from like a from like a Ferrari, you know, because they know it's mechanical. They know that it's about speed or it's about, you know, it's about military. So we already start believing half of the lie, you mm -hmm. know, and that's kind of what I say to students a lot of time is as a, as a concept artist, you're in the business of telling a professional lie. You're, you're making someone believe something that doesn't exist. Mm. You know, by putting in just enough truths, mm -hmm. you know, and yeah, and, and what you're speaking to is is a bit of the nature of kit bashing at its root. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And so kit bashing, you know, is is something that's so important that I that I wish was there earlier. Mm. You know, I wish that was there earlier. But I know that, you know, timing is always is it's nature's way of saying, OK, this is when it's needed and this is when it's right. So when kit bashing was something that was first discovered or first implemented into the working process, it revolutionized things. You know, it created efficiency. It created a new way to design. Like you don't have to be that perfect draftsman that's drawn for 30 years to be able to draw up something cool. You can utilize kit bashing techniques and, and ideologies to create something so awesome. You know, I have, I have this one, um, student that I was working with before and and he had the best imagination I kid you not and he knew everything about every weapon gun uh, uh, tank airplane that the military has ever built you know and he he just couldn't draw that well mm. okay now come the assets of 3d now come his ability to now change the tool he was trying to be Photoshop because everyone would want to learn that but once he discovered 3D as a tool for himself, oh my gosh, he became one of the industry's best robot designers. Hmm. Hmm. Amazing. Yeah. Wow. We got some, I'll let you keep working um, while we field some questions. Absolutely. This is awesome to see how you're using these photos in here. Um, in case, you know, in case a lot of the people in the chat haven't seen this kind of photo bashing before, mm -hmm. it's, uh, I remember when I first saw it, I was like, oh my God, you're allowed to that you know <laughs> yeah. and I think uh, one of the things you learn pretty quickly is there are no rules yes you know Correct. it's it's really about how do you convey if your goal right now is to capture that moment that's in your head using all the tools at your disposal to accomplish that goal mm -hmm. um, just want to throw that out there in the chat for people who are like what the hell is that <laughs> you know the thing is is that there's and I had to learn this uh, really early on, which is there's a difference between concept art and kind of like fine art and illustration, okay? We have a purpose, and our sole purpose is to deliver a visual so that somebody can either, you know, build it in a, into a matte painting, you know, build it into 3D so you can actually have a playable space in a game, and they do not care how you get there. You know, it is really about the finished product, you know, just like in the commercial world. Mm -hmm. um, in illustration and fine art, the process is a big, huge part of the development, you know? And that's where there's a little bit of a difference. The, that's the main difference between the disciplines. Mm. Yeah. yeah, and I do wanna, I do wanna bring this up because uh, the Ville Brain says, uh, but don't cut and paste other artists' work. And oh, that's yeah. a huge yes. Like, do not do that. Uh, it's really important that when you're using photographs that Either you get it on a stock photo website like uh, Shutterstock or something like that where you have a license to be able to use that image mm -hmm. or you go out and take that picture yourself. Yeah, um, actually right now I'm showing a, a, a bunch of photos that I took when I went on a architectural tour in Chicago. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know? awesome. And I'm like, I'm going to use that for work. Mm -hmm. Hell yeah, I'm going on that tour. And it was a really, really cold day and I had to bear with it just because I was like, man, I'm going to find some gold. I know I'm going to, and I've used this photos, you know, these photos here for many, many years, um, trying to figure out how to make them, you know, yeah, find nice. its way into the work. And you guys should check out ArtStation Marketplace, actually, mm -hmm. um, which just launched this year. And they have tons of artists who go on these trips together, reference for themselves so that they can use them in paintings like this. And they'll put reference packs up of guns or machinery or sunsets or epic clouds or whatever it is and they'll put their own packs up on uh, art stations. So if you see an artist you like, uh, a lot of times they'll have their own store where they have all their references too. 
yeah. Art Station Marketplace is a really cool spot for that, where you can then support artists that you like or artists that you follow, maybe on Art Station, um, and you can support some of their their travel and their desire to share their lens and reference with you. Um, let's. There's a couple questions from the audience as you're working, mm -hmm. and we'll see if we can uh, we can sure. tag team these. Raji asks. And this is from a while ago, so I apologize. We, I've been holding on to it. So we, we see your questions, and I just wait for the right moments for them. Yeah, and thank you for, for dropping your questions in the chat. Please keep them coming. Uh, Raji asks, what are some entry-level positions in the video game industry for the art department? Um, well, if you want to eventually make your way as a uh, full-blown, I guess, concept artist, one of the best things to be able to do is or one of the easiest, well, I wouldn't say easiest. All, all the jobs are a bit challenging. But one of the jobs that is for entry level is someone that just knows how to draw. Mm -hmm. Okay, And it's very simple. If you can draw a box and eventually make that into a briefcase, perhaps, you know, um, or, you know, there's a ball that turns into a Pokemon thing, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. they, video games, film, all need people to translate, you know, somebody's painting sometimes that's very complex, has a lot of color and all this stuff, into a very simple drawing, okay? And that's production art at its finest. Mm. Those line drawings then get handed off to maybe a 3D modeler, and they start building it into real forms, you know? Uh, textures, painting textures. Um, one, then this is somebody that you guys might want to look up, is his name is Keikai Tokaki. He is one of the industry's best uh, fantasy illustrators and concept designers. And his actual first job was at a video game company um, painting textures, mm. you know? So he would paint like like a dragon scale textures or like, uh, or like wood that would go on a table, you know? Mm. And eventually found his way up into, um, you know, being a monster powerhouse of, of a concept designer. He's awesome. Huh. Do you, have a, do you have a link for that? I, I don't, not yet. How do you spell his name? That's K-E-K-A-I. Oh, Sky's got it. Sky, Sky's all over. Um, great. Well, let's, I want to I wanna make sure we don't miss any of the, the creation that's happening in front of us, because um, I'm, I'm watching on this, on this small screen of, of all the, the details that are going on here, and I think it's so, it's so fun watching, you know, it's, it's, it's almost amazing how fast you're working because it's it, it these tiny things or what feel tiny mm -hmm. are actually huge huge things that just are, are your reps um, before us yeah this this is actually it what I really love about this process of being a digital painter is that it's familiar because of my traditional illustration background mm -hmm. you know I, I, I used to have these assignments where we had to go outside and paint. I actually take paints out and draw or mm -hmm. paint what we saw. And capturing mood really, really quickly, uh, just putting down big washes of color. This is exactly what I'm doing now, you know? Yeah. And, and there's a little bit of a, you know, I think a backdraw with today's age of, of just doing only digital stuff. I, I think having a background in doing a bit of traditional work is always really good, mm -hmm. you know? For anyone I know that does a lot of 3D, they also do a lot of model making, like physical mm -hmm, model making, because mm -hmm. the tangible feeling, it, it, it aids when you work in 3D, and same thing is true here as well. Yeah. Yeah. It's really, I think, it's really great to get into the analog world um, you know, while, while pursuing digital, digital dreams. Yeah. Um, one of these render passes you see that James is going back and forth between is a Z-depth pass, which shows the, the difference of depth so that he can isolate just these buildings here in the foreground and only paint onto those, giving light and detail to them while leaving out the, the background or what goes into the distance. Which is one of the advantages of using 3D is you can render out a couple of these passives, which makes the painting process so much faster. Right, because 3D, the assets are all broken up and where you can move the camera in any way, where if you just started without that, uh, you wouldn't have that advantage. Question from the chat from Ian Vickner. Uh When doing concept art like this um, and you're under client time, do you take time to make specific brushes for that project? Or do you kind of just have your standard brush set that you use? It's such a 
what brush do you use question. But, yeah. <laughs> but it's a good one because you've, you've made a lot of your own brushes. And I'm curious, do you, do you make those brushes per project or do you kind of just build your own library and work with that? Um, that's, it's a combination of both. Um, I always have my go-to tools that you'll see here on the right. But there are times when there's a very specific type of thing that you're going to be doing. Like I remember working on this one project where I had to paint a bunch of chains. Okay, and I'm like, screw this, I'm gonna make a chain brush, and I'm just like, like, you know, mm -hmm. busting out chains like no other. Um, and that helps save so much time, Yeah, mm -hmm. you know? So that, that whatever 20 minutes or 15 minutes that it was to make that chain brush, it actually saved hours on hours on hours of time. You know, Amazing. I, we see that pattern repeat so much, right? Like heavy, heavy preparation or or work on the front side will pay off dividends in, in the long run. Yeah, I, I used to have this one instructor that that I, I guess it was too ahead of my time to really understand and comprehend. Mm -hmm. But he's like, you know, when you get to a certain stage, you're going to be planning for about eighteen hours, and you're going to draw for about six. Mm -hmm. And you're going to do much more work than just going at it for 24 hours, you uh -huh. know what I mean? And I'm like, that makes absolutely no sense. You're like this de delusional old guy. Like, <laughs> get out of here, you know? Mm -hmm. But, you know, I'm, I'm in past. those words. <laughs> hmm. Guys in the chat, as, he's, uh, as James is working, if you have questions about his process, his career, his... I don't know, what's, what's your favorite food? My favorite food? Mm -hmm. Um, gosh, anything with cheese? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> no, I love, I, I'm, I'm, oh man, I am such not a picky eater, but I, I really like Mexican food. I love mm. Mexican food. Yeah. Um, the, that's kind of the LA. You're in the right place. You're yeah. in the right place. Yeah. Um, um, for those of you who have never been to LA, we have our own unique Mexican Korean fusion, mm -hmm. which is out of this mm -hmm. world. Um, shout out in the chat to Kalina. What up, Kalina? Uh, so good to have you here. Uh, Kalina, the, the first time Kalina showed up in the chat was in the Kitbash 3D Festival last year. Um, and so she's been uh, an active member along the way, and um, it's been really great to, to see her here and have her back. Um, I got a question for Droki out there. Um, as James is painting this, I'm looking and I'm trying to figure out which kits or how many different kits he used. I'm, I'm sure of it that, that you've got Art Deco in there and Future Slums. Um, are there more? Yeah, we got Nino Boombox in the room. What's up, Nino? Nino's Boombox. For Islam. This uh, is, yeah, this is so cool. Please, um, if you're out there and you're being silent, um, you're more than welcome to. But if you want to engage, please uh, uh, let us hear your voice in the chat. Gusho in the house. What up? Um, Gusho says, could you share with us one of your biggest failures and where that led afterwards? Some of the biggest failures. Yeah. Um, I guess, like, as a professional, working on the job, perhaps, I guess, I could, that's where I could spin that um, question, is one of the biggest failures. <laughs> I, okay, so I remember I was working at this game company. I'm not really going to say who. Um, and there was, this, there, there was this task where Whoa. I was told to finish a certain type of painting in a certain duration of time, okay? And it was just super unrealistic. And um, there, was, there was a lot of pressure at that time to, to kind of meet that expectation. And I was not able to deliver, you know? And I think a lot of it was based on the, the fear, okay? I had a lot of fear about, about pleasing mm -hmm. that individual, you know? Um, and Later, I had to realize that, you know, that, that amount of fear and doubt that was kind of coming in, if, if like you kind of think about your brain as like a hard drive, it took up like 80% of my hard drive, mm. you know? So my, my brain was actually only working on 20% of its capacity. Um, and that's something that I had to learn, you know? That, that really big failure allowed me to kind of understand, because I, I wanted to examine like, why did I not meet that goal? Like, I knew I could do it. Like, if I was at home, dude, no problem. You know, just at my own station, working on my own pace. But I soon realized that it was a lot of my own blocks, you know, that I was creating. So that, that was one. That was one huge big failure that, that actually made me kind of lose that job, okay? Mm -hmm. But 
again, kind of what we talked about earlier, you're gonna you're gonna gain if you sort of allow yourself to examine what you could, you know, from every single experience. So mm -hmm. that was something that was really key. So when what I did was I sat back and I kind of thought about, you know, did I ask myself or even ask my director the right questions? You know, could I have set myself up for better success instead of being fear of failing? You know, um, I do a lot of uh, auto racing. You know, that's mm -hmm. like a big passion of mine. And the funny thing is, is that when you're in a turn, okay, when you're kind of going in a turn, you want to look where you're going, not fearing of, oh, what if I go off of the road? You know what I mean? And there's two different mindsets with that. So if you kind of keep your eye on the goal, your body, your mind, it, it follows that direction. That's something I learned from that exercise. Yeah, if you, can, if you can stay in it yes, rather than worrying about if you crash. Right, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's funny, they say, you know, if you, if you look at the, uh, the traffic pole as it goes by you, that's, what, that's how you'll, you'll crash into it. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. if you're staring at the, at the failure mm -hmm. or the potential failure rather than, than what you're trying to achieve. Yeah, it's like, it's like I don't know if anybody got, like anybody um, does like snowboarding, but mm -hmm. it's like, you just looked that way, like you, you end up uh -huh. like just you go going there, that yeah. way. Yeah. You know, Tony Robbins says, uh, where your focus goes, energy flows. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. absolutely. Uh, I love Tony Robbins. Nice. Um, I'm curious about that. I mean, how much of your success now and, and the work that you're doing, um, are you focusing on learning new artistic techniques versus more psychological and philosophical techniques? Oh, wow. That's a, that's a, okay. So at a certain point in my development, I think it was about three or four years ago, um, I had a really good talk with another uh, artist friend of mine. And, you know, I, I kind of go back to this core group of people, that cafeteria moment when we saw the Star Wars book, there was like eight people at that table. And that eight people I'm still very close with mm -hmm. now. Um, and, and we still have these occasional dinners and we kind of chit chat about life and, and meanings and all this type of stuff. It's very, um, you know, it's like a, it's like a heartfelt conversation mm -hmm. at times, you know, very needed at times though. But it was this thing where it's like, he goes, Hey James, I bet after dinner, you're going to go home and, and you have like a bunch of like freelance work you have to get done. Right. And I was like, yeah, how'd you know? He's like, cause you're always doing it, man. You know, but when are you going to like, but when, when are you going to slow down? You know, when when is it enough painting, you mm -hmm. know? And I was like, what do you mean? He's like, you're always trying to learn new techniques, man. You're always trying to, like, you know, level up and this and this and that. But it sort of started coming to a point when I was like, oh, okay, cool. I think I have techniques under my belt. It's more about getting inspiration and, and sort of widening the scope of what I understand, you know? Because... I, I love making analogies with, with cooking and stuff like that, but it's like, you can only learn how to cook so many things, but it's like, now you create like fusions, you know, mm. you start thinking out of the box and that's more of like a mental thing in my opinion, than trying to sit there and be like, I'm going to best be the best like fryer on the, mm -hmm. on the grill or something, you know, like, I don't, I don't know the <laughs> terminologies that well, but hey. that's kind of what it is. E-Man talked a bit about that last week of how he wanted to use his set to take the buildings and, and turn them into trains. Right. You know, and he, t you know, he wanted to, to, how do we make some kind of fusion with the kits? Mm -hmm. How do I take two or three kits, or in his case, like seven kits, um, and make something completely new with it? Yep. Which, by the way, I think Droke answered he, this he, question. He, he did. He said, Future Slums, Art Deco, and the Highway is Props Kit. Ah, nice. cool. Yeah. Super cool. And there's just things, man. There's, there's just... I think we all react to certain types of visuals. You know, we're all humans. We all have two sets of eyes and we all have a heart and, and things that look good and things that inspire you, you know, like when you're driving down the beach and you see this really cool sunset, you're like, oh, wow. Dude, chances are like nine out of 10 people are gonna have that same mm -hmm. exact reaction. And it's how do you repeat that? Mm -hmm. You know, how do you make that happen in, in like a science fiction world? You know, yeah. or how do you make that happen in an underwater like movie set? You know, mm -hmm. it's it's really fun. Yeah. So that whole idea of recreating in and trying moment. to re yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. that's so good. So right now you're it looks like you're adding some of like up light from like the city lights coming, shining down below, mm -hmm. and and you're going in there and painting with a brush. What's what, what are you doing right now? So I'm thinking about how do I show life? 
how do I actually show that there's things happening in this environment that, that are a little bit more familiar, you know? So I'm adding in some steam, I'm adding in some, you know, things like, oh, maybe it's a really early morning and, and there's like these apartments that are, you know, um, the, the boilers are going and all this kind of stuff. So I'm like, okay, let's, let's add a little bit of things that hint at life, mm. um, hint at something that we all can recognize, you know? Mm. I love that when when the the reason for everything comes into existence. You know, when when we look at the image, or when you're when you're starting to craft an image, you think of why would this be this way? Mm -hmm. What what of the people or the the inhabitants of this space made it like this? Yeah. So anytime I'm traveling, I'm in like a taxi cab, and then I'm driving through this really new space that I've never been in before. I'm like looking at, I'm just like in observation mode. I'm like trying to take photos with my eyes, take everything in and just be like, wow, that's cool. That's cool. Oh my God, that's awesome. You know, and, and, and I think naturally, you know, like when you, you know, for, for anyone that's drawn as a kid, you could be at the mall walking by the toy store that your mom doesn't let you go into and you're like, I, I want just a glimpse uh -huh, of like a, uh -huh. a, like a robot and then yeah. you go home and draw it. Like yeah. <laughs> it just naturally comes out of you. So that's kind of like what we're doing as like adults. It's the same exact thing, you know? Mm. Um, Big Imp asked an uh, interesting question on here. He says, why are we streaming this in 720 if it's, a, if it's an art uh, thing? And the, the thought there, Big Imp, it's a good question, um, is that pulling in so many different uh, assets and we got a lot of people live streaming in, we wanted to make it a smooth viewer experience for you. Um, so I'm interested to know what you think. If you think 720 is not high enough quality, I'd, I'd love to know that. Yep, frame rate versus uh, resolution. Let us know where you land. Um, Jay, uh, Jay Nense, I believe I got it, um, asks, how do you deal with artist block? I feel like my work is never as good as it could be. How do you deal with uh, the blocks? Mm. Okay, so going back to uh, when I worked at this one game studio, I had one of the worst artist blocks that you could imagine. I started to try to get inspiration from like a fork and I put a fork in a forest and my art director was like, what are you doing, man? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, dude, like you can, you can do better than this. You're lost in the woods. Yeah, and I'm like, you know, I'm just, I'm just stuck, okay? And he was able to sort of forecast it like this. He, he said to me, he's like, hey man, um, two things. Number one, you're not a robot and you're not, you cannot just produce awesomeness every single day, so just know that, it's okay. And number two, figure out how to get out of it, okay? Mm. So literally at that moment, he's like, we worked in Santa Monica at that point. He's like, get up, walk to the beach, walk back, you know? And he's like, just look around, just breathe, let it all in. And maybe, if you're lucky, you'll find inspiration, mm. you know? So I did that and I came in and I just looked at him. I was like, I'm ready to go. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I want to do this now. I have it, I have it, you know? Mm. And I think taking that break our body tells us what's happening in, in sort of these like subliminal, like kind of hidden ways. And I think if you can kind of like key into that, it's really good. So take a coffee break, you know, play a video game. Dude, I used to play like Guitar Hero anytime I was really stuck, you know, because I just wanted to time out. I just want to rest yeah. that muscle. You can't do bicep curls like 24 hours a day. You're going to die, you know. <laughs> so you need to rest that muscle, you know. We, so. we literally said that last night. We were like, man, we should play more video games. <laughs> <laughs> Which said no productive person ever. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, it's, a, it's a good point. And to the chat, I'm curious too. Um, do you guys have morning routines um, or do you have uh, a specific type of break that you like to take? Um, share it. Uh, share share those kinds of things with us and with one another. I'm, I I would love some some inspiration myself. Um, I have some specific morning routines, but I'm I'm dying to know what you guys do. Yeah, and I joke. I, I do have to say, video games for me is like my my go to turn off the world. Mm -hmm. And like I'll just binge a game. I won't play regularly a game, but like a new game like Spider Man or something will come out, and like I'll be like, okay, I'm gonna block out these two days and just plow through it and turn my brain off from the world and. Mm -hmm. it's, such an amazing, uh, amazing thing to do. Yeah. Um, are there, do, you, do you still game? Oh yeah, I still play video games. Um, they've kind of changed. I, I play games in, in two ways. One is to kind of keep current with what's out there and, and play games that are new, you know, mm. because that's, that's our pop culture. These new games are gonna influence other games and they're gonna keep influencing. And then the other games that I play are purely just for my own personal just like geekiness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
What uh, I'm curious for the chat. Anyone have any good uh, good game recommendations for this uh, this winter? We got a holiday break coming up, and we could use a to do list. So if there's some games coming out or games that you guys are playing that you guys are all about, um, let us know. We'd love to hear what you guys are playing and, and any suggestions y'all have. Yeah, there we go. And of course, right off the bat, Red Dead Redemption just comes mm -hmm. over like 15 times. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that's a good one. Um, that's amazing. There, there was a question here about will there be a PSD um, from this? Uh, it's a good question uh, that I don't know the answer to. Um, we'll have to uh, we'll have to see where we get on the end. And uh, if uh, if you guys want though, um, and you're looking for uh, PSD files from uh, some of the cover art and things like that, um, go on to kipash3d.com and in the stories page, um, which you can see on the home page, um, click through and you can you can download some free PSDs right there. Um, or uh, join the email list. Um, we're sending out PSDs all the time. So if you want um, free, uh, helpful tools like that, and you're interested in Photoshop and breaking apart um, to see how uh, some of the masters like James are, are making some of their great art, um, dig into that. Yeah, and we release a new kit every month. Uh, when we release a new kit, uh, we come out with a cover, and we get a guest artist to do a cover for it. Um, usually we bring them here on this show on uh, twitch.tv uh, slash kipesh3d. Uh, we interview them, they show their process, and then we send out that PSD for everyone to be able to pull apart and get to know that nice. artist's workflow. Yeah, so with your time in between these, uh, uh, the festival streams, um, you can check that out. There's all kinds of videos on our YouTube as well as on our, uh, uh, on our website, kipesh 3 d we got we got some rim. These are some of the uh, suggestions. Uh huh. Rim World. Have you played that? No. Okay. Rim World on the list. Uh, Runescape. That's an old one. Uh, Magic the Gathering. Oh yeah. There you go. Do you we, play Magic? We, uh, I do. I, I, well, James, I, I just James, started. Oh, I, I just started. I got one on this. So we were actually playing Magic the other night. Um, and I pulled out a swamp mana. Nice! And right down in the bottom it says Art by James Peck. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And you're like, look yeah. at this! <laughs> um, Super cool. Yeah, it was. there's a bunch A bunch of the magic artists have done Kibash covers. Jonas mm -hmm. Dero, who did oh, yeah. Egypt. Egypt. Like has every done other card. Of magic cards, yeah. Because we, we just started, like, we got a bunch of packs and we were like, we're going to open them up and play like a. I don't know what we're, we're, impulse we're, impulse we're, magic. Uh -huh. We're seeking balance too. Yeah, exactly. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and like half the cards I pulled out were Jonas's. Was like, yeah. Oh my god, you do a lot of paintings. Yeah. Jonas is badass. Yeah, yeah. man. Um, let's well, see what well, else we got. And 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 I really want to just make sure we're not missing um, some of this amazing stuff that James is doing here before our eyes. I want to uh, make sure that we stay focused on catching all these little details. Nah, it's boring. <laughs> <laughs> nice. What do you uh? What are you painting now? What is this? So I have the the big building here sort of as the main focal point, but I'm starting to just introduce secondary and tertiary areas where it's like, oh, that's a little cool thing. That's a cool thing. So the eye kind of has this tendency to kind of keep bouncing around the imagery. Um, and so then the image never feels boring. You know, that's mm. the whole idea is that, you know, whether you're watching a movie or playing a video game, you're just constantly moving your eyes around, scanning, finding these little cool like Easter eggs or just kind of cool moments that are happening. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah. And, and that's what I really like about this. Yeah. Um, Len Teku asks, what kind of tablet is that? This is a Wacom Cintiq 27-inch. Um, do you use a Wacom at home? Yes, I do use a uh, Wacom. Um, I usually use the tablet. So usually like the Intuos, but uh, occasionally I do use the um, the Cintiq as well. Mm. Awesome. For those of you who don't know, if you haven't used a Wacom uh, tablet before, uh, Wacom makes these tools for artists that are amazing. The Cintiq is basically a monitor that you can draw right on top of, mm -hmm. and then the Intuos is almost like a, a, a trackpad, uh, but with a pen. So. Um, so you can use it instead of a mouse. Yeah, and if anyone's actually thinking or wondering what do professionals actually use, it is is this right here. It's a Wacom. Yeah, yeah. That's the industry standard. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, I don't know any digital artist who doesn't. Right. Um, super cool though for us. It's I think it's important um, because I know there are a lot of uh, new new artists, young artists, or people who who don't know much about the business um, that are watching this show. Um, I think it's really cool to showcase the tools. 
that are that are being used and and talk about how um, you know what are the things that that help and make a difference when you're when you're trying to dive in. I think it's really cool that you know there are these types of resources out for people to get inspired and understand about the industry, understand about techniques and what professionals do. Mm -hmm. Because without even something like this, you know, someone like me years ago would have never had that opportunity to learn as well. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. so it's it's really awesome that you know this this is just happening in general. Mm -hmm. It's just really really cool. There's a, there's a, a huge awakening of of information sharing and of, of tricks and tips and, mm -hmm. and you know it's almost like you can have a, you can have an apprenticeship um, online. Yeah. Yeah. And with that, um, I just want to give a shout out and thank you to Twitch and to ArtStation for um, supporting us and helping us put this together and, and to bring you all these resources. Um, and a thank you to the Bob Ross Festival for Ooh. teaming up with us and yeah. letting us team up with you. Um, on that note, too, uh, our station has done a really cool solid here. They're going to give everyone um, who's watching a free two-month pro membership. Whoa. So, so if you use Kipash 3D Pro um, in the, that coupon code in the uh, when you when you sign up, you will get two months free of an ArtStation Pro account, which is which is pretty substantial. Yeah, uh, you use ArtStation. Clearly, we were looking at oh, your yeah. ArtStation earlier. Oh yeah, absolutely. What uh, what's your take on it? What do you like? Do you think it's a necessary part of being a concept artist today? Yes, that is. Uh, so, I've had, I guess, in any way, shape, or form, when exposure is is of question. Okay, you you need to get your name out there. You need to get people to see your portfolio. You want to hire somebody. You want to network. The go-to place is ArtStation, okay? Mm -hmm. And um, it's almost like, wait, what? if you don't have one, you're like, why don't you have one? You know, it becomes like a bigger question, you know? So it's a, it's really a, such an awesome place to get inspiration, to find what people are doing, to see what's happening across the planet of what art is happening now in like, in like Russia or China or in South Africa, you mm -hmm. just don't know. And you, become exposed to artists that you've never heard of, you know? You're just like, whoa, where did this person <laughs> hide? Where were yeah. you this whole time? And it, it's, it's, an awesome, it's an awesome collective. Yeah, yeah amazing. It's great. There's, there's never been a better time to put yourself out there mm -hmm. and to, to get to be part of a community online. Yes. Um, I have to check myself. I, I said the code wrong. It's Kitbash Pro, um, and I put, I put it in the, uh, the chat there. So just go to kit, uh, artstation.com slash promo, and the code is Kitbash Pro. Um, so I, I was noticing here, w watching closely as you you were using some of that that Z depth pass again to create this atmosphere in only the buildings there in, in sort of your mid ground. Right? Yes. Um, so then you can isolate the. Do, do you often do that where you you start in the back or you start in the front and you work your way forward or backwards? Yeah. So um, I always start from the background. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if if you kind of go back and you kind of look at it, it's the start was from the sky, yeah. just setting the tone. Mm -hmm. And the reason why that is, is because lighting, tone, and color all starts from the sky. Mm. You know, whether it's a light sky, a dark sky, a blue sky, or a red sky, or whatever, uh, it's gonna dictate everything below it. Yeah. You know, so that's, that's the starting point. That yeah. makes sense. Amazing, yeah. Um, and it's cool to see how much you're using these references. You know, you talked about surrounding yourself with the world that you're you're diving into. Mm -hmm. um, you, you can just see yourself pulling pulling tiny pieces of it and reversing it, so it it, it has its own unique specific texture um, as you, you're you're taking it into your scene. It's funny that you know the the tendency I think sometimes with you know myself and other artists that I know is you try to throw out so many different types of photos to give you that the amount of material that you need. But sometimes, I mean, if you guys have noticed, I'm just <laughs> ripping this one photo like no other, man. <laughs> like a shredder, <laughs> just, just little pieces here and there. and <laughs> like Just taking a light bulb and mm -hmm. <laughs> repurposing. Um, a question here from Tavi Jean. Um, should I be waiting until I have an actual, con I have actual concept art pieces to post my portfolio, or should I put up my studies and other personal art as well on ArtStation? I'm kind of clueless about the etiquette here. I think it's important to get into the habit of constantly posting, mm. um, because it is a, it's a way to drive yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, you constantly post, and you constantly create, and that repetition is what gets you exposure. It's what shows improvement. 
it also shows that you really want to do this. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You can tell when you're looking at a body of work if somebody enjoys what they do, mm -hmm. you know, and it's very apparent, it's very, very clear. And I think that's one of the habits that's really important to get into. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? I think one of the a repetition is such a, a great word for it. I think if, if this is something you really want to do, if you really want to do concept art, um, doing new work on a constant basis and setting a rhythm for yourself of whether or not that's going to be uh, once a day, once a week, once a month, but whatever it is to have the discipline to set that schedule and that demand on yourself and then meet it over and over and over again, uh, that shows someone who's really committed to doing this. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I think it's it's such an easy pitfall too to, to get into the perfectionist mindset of I'm gonna wait until I have you know only hyper professional work to populate my portfolio mm -hmm. when what you what you want is and I think it's it's the, the pitfall is predicated upon our generation believing that overnight success you know is instant gratification is it happens in just a moment you know that you go from being from being someone who doesn't know to exploding or you didn't you didn't make it. And I think the truth of the matter is success is a long, slow, steady road. Um, you know, there's ups and downs and, and massive uh, uh, change along the way, but it's a long process. And I think it's important, just like these guys were saying, to, to get in the game as soon as possible and to iterate and get repetition. Mm. And I don't think success looks like a, a smooth road upwards. It's like spike up, plateau, drop down. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's such a wild ride as you improve. As long as you're always striving yeah. and endure the plateaus that you're going to hit and and pick yourself back up from those falls, mm. um, it's I don't think it's um, you know it's it's that determination, that perseverance to just keep going no matter where you're at on that journey. I think sometimes too the 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 moment where you're most frustrated is where a breakthrough is just like right there, mm. you know. Yeah. It's almost like life's way of uh -huh. like testing it. Come on, like can you do this? Come on, do it, do it, do it. You know. And persevere just that much more, take it day by day, and these breakthroughs are gonna happen where you're just like, you make these jumps that are mm -hmm. just ginormous, you know? Um, and you're like, if I just stopped yesterday, I would have never, yeah. never been able to right. do that, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and that's what so many people do, I think. They, they experience a plateau and they quit. Yeah. You know, where like the, the, the masters of that know and expect plateaus and maybe even dips and where you get a little bit worse because you're trying a new technique. Mm -hmm. um, and if you can find patience in that, um, and usually, it, you know, the patience comes like at the at your your breaking point. You know, right, you're, right. You're on the, you know, on the ground curled in a ball, you know, in a, in a bathroom <laughs> crying or something. <laughs> it's always in a bathroom. Shower of shame. You know, and then you find that moment, and you you your life changes. You know? I think that's key. You just like, you hit it on the dot. It's like, you know, no one likes to lose. Mm -hmm. And if you if you think about a piece of art, like as your as your nemesis, you know, what <laughs> I mean? you're like, no, I'm gonna beat you. You're not gonna beat me. You know what I mean? So I'm gonna lock myself in this room until we're done. Like we're gonna figure this out. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I call it the valley of suck, because like. Uh, you know, you start a painting and you have this idea and you start to throw colors in there and it starts to take shape and you're like, oh, it's it's starting to look cool. Mm -hmm. And right when that happens, when you have to go and start to refine things, it kind of you have to break it. Yeah. And it hits this kind of in-between stage where the idea is out of your head, but it's not a finished painting and everything in between there, a lot of times it has to look a lot worse before it starts looking better. Mm -hmm. And you mm -hmm. just got to persevere through that valley of suck. Yeah. <laughs> and that's like 60% of painting for me at least. And then you get to the end, and that last little 10% is like, boom. Oh my god, now it, it finally works. Yes. It's like a video game. Yeah. yeah. You're going to hit that boss fight. You're going to suck, man. You're going to get owned, uh -huh. right? But you're going to die, you're going to repeat, die, repeat, die, mm -hmm. repeat, die, repeat. And then you're going to be like, oh my god, I figured out where the weak point is. You know? And yeah. you, you like exploit it, and you, like, and you win, you know, eventually. Yeah. And then that boss becomes easy. Yeah. You know, yeah. you just walk through it all day long, you know? <laughs> great, great game design and game loops, I feel like, mimic, mimic mm -hmm. those great moments of life. Yeah. You know, the Absolutely. trials and tribulations, tests, and, and growth. That's cool. Man, this image is, is coming together in some incredible ways here. Yeah, this is awesome. Yeah, let's stay full screen on here for a little bit, just so we can see these details come to life. We're, we're coming. We've got 20 minutes here on the on Oops. the on the clock, and it is uh, mm -hmm. it's amazing what uh, what's already here. So this is actually a a 
I guess, kind of a lot of practice of understanding Photoshop, how to use photos, but also just being observant to your environment. You know, you can learn, you could, you could actually, um, you know, when I, I was in Hawaii with a, a couple of buddies for, for my friend's wedding. And we're all concept artists in this one rental car and we're driving through the countryside and we were coming across this uh, sugar cane plantation or something. And we're like, whoa. <laughs> and we all said, whoa, at the exact same time. <laughs> and we're like, hold on, what are you looking at? What are you looking at? What are you looking at? And we all started talking about, I'm looking at the shape. And another friend who was a painter, he's like, I'm trying to figure out what colors to mix to make that green of the sugar cane. And I was like, well, I want to look at the perspective so I can like effectively copy what I'm looking at. <laughs> and it's like, there's inspiration everywhere. Uh -huh. And being observant allows it to kind of come into your pieces. You know, it's going to yeah. breathe life into them. Yeah. Look, take, take a breath and look around. Uh, this is cool. Can you talk a little bit about this brush and, and, and how you're painting this on? Yeah, so I have, a, I have a texture that I'm just sort of rinsing and repeating uh, to put onto this building surface. And it's just to give it a, a texture, a shape, mm -hmm. something that will give it a bit of tooth, you know, mm. of believability. Now, I'm using this brush. This brush specifically has a little bit of a, a dry brush effect. So it's not like your pure digital type of brush, but it feels very soft. That's going to allow the texture and painting it in and out so that it kind of feels more believable within this space, mm. within this type of lighting, within this type of atmosphere, you know? Yeah. Mm. That's super cool. And I love, I love you, you called it tooth. To mm -hmm. give a tooth, I think that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. You know, there's a, there's a lot of things that, you know, when, when you try to replicate life, when you try to replicate what you're seeing with your eyes through a paintbrush or through, you know, a pencil or a pen, whatever it is, you, you kind of understand that you're not trying to copy exactly what it is, but you're trying to copy what it feels like, mm. you know? And that's really kind of a, a, a really different transition. Yeah. So there's feel and then there's like drawing, like, like I'm gonna draw this, this tablet or this Cintiq exactly how it looks, you know? But then also what does it feel like? There's like two different uh -huh. properties. Yeah. yeah, what a cool distinction. Yeah, it's like painting your interpretation and like w how you see it. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and no, and no two people are gonna actually see exactly the same way. You know what I mean? They're they're gonna absorb it a little bit differently from your life experiences and that sort of thing. So every artist has a very unique take on, you know, if we all sat down and started drawing like, oh, the coolest spaceship in the world, it'd be like three different ideas. Yeah. Like, yeah. Off yeah. the bat, you know. I'm or they'd all be X wings. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna botch an Eminem quote here, but it's like, I think it's, I can't tell you what it really is, but I can tell you what it feels like. Mm. Nice. Um, the question from Scotty, is it necessary to be well-versed in environment character and vehicle design in order to succeed as a concept artist, or can I specialize in one and still have success? Oh yes, you can. That's the really cool thing about today's age of concept design is before it used to be very segmented and you had to be kind of a specialist in a certain category. Now there's both. You can be a generalist that wants to do everything and you could actually learn to be a specialist because there's people that just do weapon design. There's people mm -hmm. that just do characters. There's people that just do robots or vehicles. Mm -hmm. And there's people that just do military spec vehicles. You, sure? you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, look at if, and, and here's, here's one interesting factor about video game design, which I learned when I was working on a Medal of Honor game, which is you have to f trick the people who are military geeks. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. People that are actually in the military will play these games yeah. and they gotta believe it, mm -hmm. you know? So the weapons, the, 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 the motions, you know, the symbols and all that kind of stuff have to be really on par. So it's important to know something like a specialist. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like yeah. dive in it, like just geek out, you know? Do it because you love it and it'll come out in your design, it'll come out in your art. It's, it's really cool. Hmm. Yeah, there's there's all kinds of opportunities out there. You know, you can be more of a generalist, like James was, James was saying, or you can you can be hyper unique and know the the ins and outs and make something really authentic. And the the painstaking detail that goes into making a, a game or a movie feel um, true to form is is mind boggling. We got another question here from Big Imp. He says, "How do you know when to stop 
uh, and he says, it, this painting looked good a while back. <laughs> you could also spend a hundred more hours on it. Well, that's, you know, I think that's one of the time timeless questions for artists. You know what I mean? Yeah. As a personal note, or I'll, I'll answer it with um, on the job, it's when they tell you it's done, <laughs> okay? Or when, you know, the literally the bell ends at the, or rings at the end of the day. But on a personal note, it's, it's really hard to say when something's done, okay? But at art school, this is what we used to do, is we would make our, oops, we would make our, um, image full screen just like this and and you have to sit back to kind of look at the entire thing you know mm -hmm. when it's small you kind of lean in and when it's on full screen you kind of zoom out and then you're like it's the funniest question is does it feel right mm -hmm. you know this this building right here is where I want people to look you know it has the highest point of contrast you got the cool lights everything is is a little bit less of a of a contrast that when it's right here so while i'm looking at this building does it feel right does the rest of the details feel right because if you look over here into the corners there's a lot of messiness mm. but that's not where you're supposed to look mm. you know? so while looking here you kind of use your peripherals and be like okay does it feel right then it's done <laughs> awesome robert rodriguez says if if the audience is noticing the the things you're not trying to you know the the little things in the corner then you're not doing your job right. Mm. You know that he didn't he didn't achieve what the the feeling that he wanted. Right. You know, and it's not about having a perfect image; it's about transferring emotion. Mm -hmm. I'm curious to see. We have about ten minutes left with this painting, and I'm curious to see what are the what are the final little tweaks that you're gonna do that are the 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 missing pieces for you to make it <laughs> make it feel right. Mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I think you know the my process of building an image has has sort of found its own way, its own course of, of kind of perfecting, not perfecting, but uh, refining mm -hmm. my process that works for me, okay? Through a lot of trial and error. And what I like to do is I like to initially start with the focal point Well, I establish the overall mood. I kind of designed out this building first and then I filled in the rest of the details later. Now I'm coming back to this with a little bit more push so that it pops out a little bit more, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know? So the finishing details are now actually just gonna be allocated to just this one building, you know, nothing, nothing else. Huh. So it's kind of a, a, a little bit of a back and forth sort of push. So you found the, the, the piece of the puzzle that matters the most. Mm -hmm. Now we have something that I, I wanna point out because I think this will help, help people out. Um, we had Abrexus says the red on the left seems to catch the eye and and you touched on this earlier about you want some other areas in the painting to have some visual interest to move an eye around a canvas. Correct. Um, rather than having just one focal point to have like a secondary and a tertiary focal point so that there's multiple things that catch your interest while still guiding you towards that main goal. Is that the idea here? Yeah. And, and I, you know, here's the thing that I also try to do is um, I try not to be too analytical while I'm creating. Mm -hmm. You know, I let it go into phases. So I'm just in creation mode. If I feel like it should be right there, I'm just going to do it. You know, I'm just going to keep mm -hmm. going because then you're just going to go back to it and back and forth and back and forth. You're going to find yourself just noodling this thing in the corner. So I'll do this whole bit. You know, I'll go through the whole creation process and then I'll sit back and just you know, maybe grab a cup of coffee, just look at it and be like, hmm, should that, should that have been maybe green? Mm. Should I change it? Because now you you can switch your brains from creative brain to sort of like analytical brain. Gotcha. What a great note. Okay, this is something that I kind of like to do too. Let's see if I can find something fun. Is I want to try to put some, uh, maybe some flying ships in the mix here. That's right. so good because uh, Solus Pyre just says need some cards, le cars or something leading to the central building. Uh, James was all over that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right now I think um, I yeah I definitely want cars. You know, especially like lights that are in the uh, on the highway and things like that. But I want to also populated up with some just like elements in the sky, uh -huh. you know, because I want- Star Wars it up. Heck yeah, man. <laughs> Can't go bad with some Star Wars. 
This is so awesome. Seeing seeing the block out that this started with from Droki, um, and what you've been able to the direction you've taken it is just is just mind blowing. This is so much fun. And I'm having I mean it's it's a blast. I'm having so much fun doing this while I'm sitting with you guys, chit chatting about just really cool stuff. This is this is life right here, man. Oh man, oh, well, well thank you. We yeah, we love man. having you here and, <laughs> and um we're so grateful that um, that we could get you on and that we could watch you work and learn so much from you and uh, and be able to share your talents and skills to everyone in the in the chat. Um, yeah, we, we from from the moment you you said you you'd be interested in doing this, we've just been over the moon excited about today. Oh, awesome! Yeah, likewise. This is cool. And thank you guys to the chat. You know, we're we're about five to ten minutes away from wrapping up and uh, and you guys have been awesome um, thank you guys for all of your questions and for interacting and for being a, a just a great group I see so many of you guys uh, answering each other's questions and giving each other advice and helping each other out um, so cool to see that's really one of the one of the big things for us with everything we do with kit bash 3d is, is really trying to create a community um, and seeing you guys interact like this is everything that we want I, I cannot echo that more. The, the fact that you guys show up with us week after week, you're, you're involved in the chat, I feel like I know so many of you. Um, we, got, we were lucky enough to get to go to some art festivals um, overseas this, uh, this past fall, and we got to run into so many of you out there and to, to realize how many people are, are, are taking knowledge from this and sharing it with one another, and to, to be part of this thing with you guys is, is one of the absolute highlights of this. So th thank you all for, for, for enjoying this. Thank you for engaging with us. Thank you for sharing it. Um, thank you for being part of the Discord. Um, if you guys want, um, there's a, a follow button up here if you, if you want more content like this. Um, also, if you just love checking out um, digital art, we have uh, a very active social channel, um, Kipash3D, um, on Twitch. I'm sorry, on uh, Instagram. Instagram. Yeah, so Instagram uh, over there, you can, um, uh, please engage with us on that side. Um, also, if you don't already, follow James's Instagram. Um, I'm going to throw it here in the chat, but James has got one of the, the coolest digital art Instagrams and concept art Instagrams that there is. So, uh, Mike Johnson, what up, dude? Uh, asks, uh, will this stream be available later? Um, it will be. We'll be posting some of these videos after the festival on our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash 3 d Yes, and these these won't go up. Um, they won't go up immediately. They um, we've we've started a, a new blog on our website um, where we're going to be taking pieces of this um, and building out some stories and making some cool tips and tricks um, from some of the individual stuff here. So we are we are actively working on making this content, repurposing this content in some of the coolest ways to to help you all engage with it on different places. Um, but you can always um, within two weeks after the show you can watch the vods. Um, here on Twitch as well. Um, while James is finishing this up, uh, uh, I'll let him kind of showcase it whenever he's ready. Um, but we have some awesome guests coming up on the Kipash 3D Festival as well. That is correct. Who do we got coming up? Uh, that's a great question, Max. <laughs> um, okay, so yes, we are incredibly excited about uh, uh, Thursday night's show as well. Um, we have Jama Jarabev, who will be, uh, be doing a really, uh, uh, if you haven't seen Jama do a, a VR demo yet, um, it's an absolute treat. We were lucky enough to catch him on stage in Holland um, in uh, early October, um, and it's, it's truly jaw-dropping, so we can't wait for that. And um, he'll be using uh, an Oculus here. He'll be kit bashing in VR uh, on Thursday. And, um, and then also on Thursday night, uh, Maximiliano here to my right is going to be doing his this guy his uh, <laughs> his contribution to uh, the festival and to to the uh, so he'll be he'll be having a set of his own creating a painting. Yeah, yeah, and uh, we got a whole bunch of other awesome people lined up. Alex Alvarez from Noman, Ash Thorpe, uh, help me out fin here. Finian McManus, Mitch Myers, Nick Hyatt. It's going to be a big old time. Um, so stick with us for sure. Tuesdays and Thursdays, 8 p.m. here. Um, James, let's take a look at this painting. Let's see yeah. what. Yeah. Let's, let's see the damage you did. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, damn, dude, this is awesome. Yeah. I mean, just <laughs> <laughs> for an hour and a half, this is nuts. Yeah. I don't. I don't even know. I don't even. 
I don't even know what to say except my jaw is on the floor. Well, you got the feeling of awe. You yeah, nailed the yeah. feeling of awesome. awe. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> uh, uh, that was bad. <laughs> in, in the chat, help me out. I, uh, I, I'm i speechless here. What, what, do y'all, what do y'all think? What, what, are your, what are your thoughts? Give us the, oh, uh, someone asked if you could toggle the block out so they oh, could yeah. see the before and after. Absolutely, yes. Droki um, goes, I can't believe how far James took this from just white AO to beautiful moody night scene in just an hour or so. Um, well, Droki, thank you very much for, for doing this collaboration here and for, for making the killer block out. Yeah. So yeah that's that's what, what Droki delivered, and then this is where James has taken it. So cool. Dude, man. crazy. From from just grayscale structures into now a whole mood and a whole scene that that feeling of the sun's just about to come up and an epic giant city. Mm -hmm. Those lights help with so much with the scale of this whole thing too. Um, Ar yeah, Arthur VP goes looks like three days worth of work. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but people are going nuts for this. <laughs> Forest Lamb goes that painting thick. <laughs> <laughs> we got. Kiara saying 11 out of 10. Nice. That's awesome. Yeah, Jan on conversely says, eh, could be better. <laughs> uh, hard to please. Look, looks sad, looks insane. Mic drop. Um, can you draw this on paper? <laughs> um, uh, Nino's boombox says badass with two Zs. Nice. Um, James, where can people follow you and find your work, and where can they get more information on Scribblepad and Brainstorm? Uh, so, um, Scribblepad has, we have our own site, um, scribblepadstudios.com, and for the school, brainstormschool.com, um, and you can find all the information that we have for classes or what our studio does, what kind of projects we work on, that sort of thing, um, as well as social media presence, whether it's Facebook or Instagram, uh, you can follow Brainstorm and myself um, on Instagram as well. Yeah. Awesome. And we're going to put all of the links up so you guys can have them. Um, James, thank you so much for oh, coming and doing awesome. this awesome demo. This was so fun. <laughs> thank you guys so much. I had a blast. And um, again, I really, really am thankful for, you know, having this uh, really awesome opportunity to be with you guys. It's oh, so cool. Wow. Thanks, so fun. man. Th thank you, man. And thank you to, to everyone, please. And anytime, James, that uh, that you want to do more, you want to do more of this, we would. You're always welcome. Yeah. Oh, psh, I'll be we here tomorrow. <laughs>